Hi, this is Deborah Atkinson, and this is again a part of the set for the Flipping 50 TV show where I shoot answers to your questions. So readers just like you send their questions to me about what they're struggling with most as far as being 50 or almost 50 and over and trying to be as fit and healthy as they can, but maybe struggling with issues that never were a problem before or finding the exercise and the nutrition that was working pretty well isn't working at all anymore. Either way, I've got you covered. And I'm here to talk about hormones today. So these are some of them. And I go over these in You Still Got It Girl, the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women book. But check these out. So let's first talk cortisol because it kind of is the top of the iceberg. And all of the rest of these hormones are somewhat affected by cortisol. So cortisol we know is the stress hormone. And if you are stressed about anything physically, because maybe you're putting lotions and perfumes on your body that carry toxins, mentally and emotionally by the work you're doing and the extra projects that you have or the worry about finances or relationships and or Physically, you're trying to exercise to get the weight off that you're really frustrated by, but you may be overdoing it and overzealous, which is causing more stress and may actually make that exercise backfire on you. Any and all of those are the same kind of stress on your body. It doesn't know the difference. Puts them all in a backpack like a bunch of bricks and you're carrying them and think of yourself as going up a steep incline carrying that. Cortisol gets in the way of your weight loss or your optimal weight like this. It tends to increase your cravings. Not good. We don't crave kale and salmon. We tend to crave sugar, chocolate, caffeine. Chocolate's not all bad all the time, but having too much of it and wanting it all the time, not probably such a good thing. Cortisol also gets in the way by disrupting your sleep. So if you're not getting enough sleep, your cortisol is up because of that. But if your cortisol is up and you're stressed, you're probably also getting not enough sleep. So it's a catch 22 and they feed into each other. So you become a vicious cycle. Cortisol also adds to cravings. If last night you didn't get a good night's sleep, you more than likely have more cravings today and they become psychological cravings. They may feel physical, you're hungry, you're not satisfied, but physiologically, you can look back and say, well, I just had lunch. I really shouldn't be hungry. That's more of a cortisol type of a craving. And something else that comes into play, when that kind of cortisol is causing cravings, ghrelin is called the hunger hormone. And when you haven't gotten a great night's sleep and you're really stressed, ghrelin is gonna tell you the following day, you're hungry, you're hungry. It is literally the hunger hormone. And even though you had lunch maybe an hour ago, two hours ago, none of us really should be hungry after a good meal with satisfying protein, fat, and fiber. So it's ghrelin kicking in. The worst part of that is leptin is the satiety hormone and it doesn't do its job. It just doesn't show up for work today meaning you're gonna eat because your ghrelin and cortisol are telling you, oh yeah, you need that, you're hungry. Even though you don't need it, leptin doesn't show up for work to tell you you're full. So you just keep on eating, never really satisfied. Bad combination, right? Growth hormone is another one of those hormones that we have to be concerned about as we age, we create less of it. Growth hormone applies to muscle. It helps muscle repair, rebuild. And every day in our just normal activities of life, we're tearing our muscles down a little bit. But if you're exercising, trying to lose weight, trying to shape up, be more healthy and stay that way, you need even more growth hormone to do its job and it does its best job at night. So if you're stressed, not sleeping, growth hormone, is produced at an even lower level. And you never reach that deep period of sleep when growth hormone is produced to the greatest extent. So we've got a problem. We need to figure out 
how do we get more growth hormone? How do we get less cortisol? So we also have less ghrelin and we get leptin showing up to do its job. Last on my list, but not least, and it's certainly not the only one that could appear here, are three of the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And as we age, as females, we go through peri and postmenopause, our sex hormones basically can tank. So if we've got those plummeting levels, we're not going to put on muscle as easy. We need testosterone to do that. We need testosterone to feel strong and create lean muscle. We need some amount of estrogen and progesterone. And cortisol wreaks havoc with those as well. So estrogen drops after we no longer need it after menopause, but estrogen and progesterone should be like this, pretty much in a balance. If cortisol is running through your system because you're highly stressed, it potentially is blocking progesterone. So it's low and you're still estrogen dominant, which can cause more problems like hot flashes if you're still going through menopause. Not a fun trip, right? So you'd really like to keep going through menopause and get to the other side. All of these come into play and should dictate how you eat and how you exercise. It's not the same exercise prescription as when you were 20, when you were 30, or even when you were 40, if you had not reached perimenopause yet. Your exercise prescription should be based on which of these hormones is really causing the most trouble and what are our goals. So if, for instance, you wanna sleep better, some of the better things that you can do will be to exercise early in the morning and ideally expose yourself to sunlight as quickly as possible after you rise. Make sure that if you exercise late in the day, it's more calming, soothing types of activities. Go for a walk, do some yoga, do some stretching, and make sure you're not revving yourself up right before you really want to and need to relax. So thinking about what's coming into play for you should tell you this is how I exercise. So it's not going to a trainer and just saying, the exercise prescription is three to five times a week of cardio, two to three times of strength training, and flexibility most days. That was the textbook example of, yes, those components need to be there. What's important for you now is timing. And it may be true that you need to cut back and not exercise for a short time if you're just burnt out you're already exhausted and your adrenals are shot. And that doesn't mean forever, but for a short period of time, we need to focus on the sleep, on the stress reduction and positive nutrition so that then we can fuel that exercise that really is gonna get you the most results. And if you want more information about that, click on the link below at foreverfitandfab.com and I'll see you on the other side.